Speaking of the workplace and some of the trends that we're seeing, working moms, they left their jobs in, jo in droves during the pandemic. And research shows that they are still struggling. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce estimates that a million women are still missing from the labor force compared to pre-pandemic levels. So here with more on this and to debunk some of the myths surrounding working moms, we want to bring in Katika Roy, a gender economist and also CEO of Pipeline. Katika, it's great to have you. Certainly some worrisome trends when it comes to working moms in the workplace. I know you have been looking into data surrounding this. What are you seeing? Well, what we're seeing, actually, we had some more women come back into the labor force. So uh, right now we have 873,000 uh, women that are still missing from the labor force since the beginning of the pandemic. And if you look at the last jobs report, uh, there is actually a gap. There are uh, 5.53 million people. And so if we brought more moms back to the labor force, we could actually close that gap by at least 16%. And kind of the million dollar, billion dollar question here is how do we do that? What needs to be done? What do you think can be done in order to lure some of those women back into the workforce? Yeah, you know, it really comes down to busting the myths around working moms in the labor force. And there really are key, three key myths. Um, one is that women, uh, moms are less committed to their jobs than other workers. And what we know from research is that actually working moms are the most productive employees over the course of their career. The second is that moms can choose whether or not they work or the myth of secondary income, which is that mom's income is just for purses and shoes. We know that that's not true. 40% of US households actually rely on mom's income as the breadwinner mom. And then the last is that moms actually need to change their behavior in order to be treated equitably in the labor force. That's not true. What we need to do is actually ensure that workplaces value moms equitably. And Katika, when you take a look at the numbers, though, the pay differential, the pay gap is still pretty significant. And when you take a look at the numbers during the pandemic, it's pretty obvious that the pandemic stunted some of that progress towards gender equity. How much ground did we lose and how long will it take in order for us, do you think, to make up that ground? Yeah, so we lost, in terms of labor force participation, we actually lost 29 years. We're currently still set back to uh, 1993 in terms of labor force participation. And just to give you a sense of what that actually means in terms of dollars, uh, women uh, actually added $2 trillion to the US economy through their increased labor force participation since 1970. So we've lost a lot of that progress. I think the question in terms of how long will it take us to uh, bridge that gap and, and get back to where we were pri prior to the pandemic and then accelerate progress is really up to the decisions that we make. Are we committed to making the workplace more equitable? And are, will we prioritize equitable skilling to ensure that women have access to the future of work? Well, one thing that certainly is not equitable, and I was taking this from some of the notes that you have passed along, you said that women face a 4% drop in wages for every child that they have compared to men who get a 6% bump in pay for having children. I'm just back from maternity leave. I just had my <laughs> second child. So this one hit pretty close to home. Why do you think this is? I mean, I guess it's obvious because then people will say men work harder because they have a family to provide for. That's ex the same exact argument for women. That's exactly right, because we actually view women, working moms, as less committed to their jobs because they're moms. That's where that bias actually comes into play, and then we see it in wages. And then you couple that with the fact that breadwinner moms, so moms that earn the majority or all of the income in U.S. households with children under the age of 18, they have the largest gender pay gap of any moms in the labor force. It's actually 66 cents on the dollar. It's a huge gap and they're supporting 40% of our future labor force. So this is something, this is a gap that we really need to invest in closing and closing it now. And Katika, talk to us just about how childcare plays into this because that was one of the reasons, one of the primary reasons that women dropped out of the workforce during mm -hmm. the pandemic. Have we seen any real sense of improvement there? No. 
that's the short answer. We haven't. We still, what we actually see, we you know, first of all, Congress hasn't passed any uh, of the American Families Plan that would invest in things like paid leave and child care. We have child care deserts where you can't actually access child care, as well as it's unaffordable for most American families. In addition to that, that being said, there are a lot of millions of working moms, 16 million to be exact, that can't actually leave the labor force uh, because of childcare issues. So we, we still need to solve for this, but also understand that it's not the only reason uh, that women left, that, that, that um, to bring women back to the labor force. Katika, are there certain companies, certain sectors, we talk about the tech sector who typically offers uh, great benefits to their employees. Any companies that are leading the way on this? That's a great question. I, you know, I don't uh, know of any that off the top of my head, mm -hmm. but what I will say is that companies who are investing in two things, one is equity of opportunity at work, as well as equitable skilling um, are the ones that will win. And let me just tell you a little bit, um, when we talk about equity of opportunity at work, what we're talking about is what Pipeline, the company that I run actually does, which is to ensure that the decisions that we're making about our employees, including working mothers, are in fact equitable. So for instance, before you make a pay decision or a performance deci re review decision or a promotion decision, that those are actually equitable. An extremely important topic. Katika Roy, CEO of Pipeline, thanks so much for joining us.